come in these places And in the middle of the sun You don't look at their faces And you don't ask their names You don't think of them as human You don't think of them at all You keep your mind on the money Keeping your eyes on the wall I'm your private dancer Dancer for money Do what you want me to do I'm your private dancer Dancer for money Any old music will do I want to make a million dollars I want to live up by the sea Have a husband and some children Yeah, I guess I want a family All the men come in these places And the men all the same You don't look at their faces You'll buy the dancer, dance up for money, do what you want me to do. I'm just a private dancer, dance up for money, any old music will do. People who put the, probably a lot of the people who gave songs to Tina and they were all British. The people that actually came to the rescue, as it were, and because she was in trouble, um, were all that kind of fan and that kind of generation of music fans who just fell in love with the whole thing, you know, and recognised her for what she, what you know, for what she is. I think a lot. Of American people didn't really like her because for, for because they wanted, you know, I think American music is very much more compartmentalised than ours. And someone like her, is, with a good voice, is always capable of having, a, not a good voice, a great voice, is always capable of having hit records. It's always amazed me that Ray Charles, even though he's an older man, isn't capable of, you know, doing the same thing because he's got a great voice. People like Dionne Moray still have hit records because they have a great voice. Aretha Franklin, she is up there amongst you know those people. They are the great singers of of their time. It was a hit, big hit album. And then when Roger said signing autographs, I thought it was you know, signing autographs. And we arrived. It was like a rock hall. It was like people standing in the streets, the police were directing traffic, and they were lined up to get into, um, into uh, the tower to buy records. I was signing What's Love Got to Do With It, uh, records that were buying singles and albums of, uh, of private dancing. And he says, darling, it's number one. And I just leaped up and went, yahoo, it's number one. And the whole place went crazy awesome. <laughs> Do with it. 
goes to What's Love Got to Do With It? And the song of the year is What's Love Got to Do With It? And the record of the year is oh, I'm so excited. Does that make you nervous? Okay, okay. What's Love Got to Do With It? I didn't know that kind of success. That, that kind of success was not a reality that I thought I would have. My goodness, this has been a wonderful evening. I, I'd love to tell everyone just how it really feels, but I don't have time. I'd like to take this award and give it to someone that's been wonderful to me as a friend and in business and in many ways. My manager, Roger Davis, it's been wonderful in here. dancer sold over to 10 million copies. I think we got five Grammys from that album. We had five top 10 singles in America and a number one record with What's Love, which was Tina's first ever number one single. And then I get back home to the hotel and Roger comes in, he goes, this is incredible. He said, George Miller just rang. He's interested in you doing Mac Mac. Oh God, that was it. Oh, I was definitely a warrior woman. I mean, everything was going click, 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 click. A lot of stuff happened after that. Mad Max, uh, you know, is about a post-apocalyptic world and we needed someone who was very powerful but most of all was a wonderful survivor. That no matter what happened in, uh, after the apocalypse, that this is someone who had, had endured and become very strong and had tremendous inner res resources. And we were writing this character, uh, the Queen of Barter Town. And, um, as a writing reference, we kept on saying, you know, someone like Tina Turner, someone like Lee Tina Turner. And when it came to shooting the film, we said, well, let's ask Tina Turner if she, if she really wants to do it. And uh, luckily she was available. She had a gap in her concerts at that stage and was able to do it. We don't need another hero. We don't need to know the way home. All we want is like the young. I'm a, I'm a single woman, basically, and, and I know that I have to work. So I would also love to act. And um, Tommy and Matt Max just sort of let me know that I can do it with proper direction. So after uh, Break Every Rule tour, I went to Hollywood and I let the top people know that I was really ready to act. What I ran into is there are very few parts for women, especially blacks. And so I'm, I, I think I'm a person that I have to wait for period movies. It has to be something like what George Miller came up with or what Conan was doing in the early stages, or I have to wait for those parts. Um, we'll see, but I still think that it's there. That's another person there that wants to, to come out of me. She's incredibly sexy on stage. She's one of the few people that when you work with on stage, doesn't lose her realness. I mean, like, as some people, uh, that you can work with on stage. And when you're with them, I'll, I'll illustrate this, um, there's a coldness in the eyes and, and they look at you and it's, they're looking straight past you or through you or something. And you know they're not really there with you, but when she's working you with it, uh, <laughs> it's really kind of, you know, you know, you really know she's there with you. I want everybody, listen, I want you to sway with me and we're gonna sing it together tonight.
I must say that I've seen Tina so many times over the years, and this is a privilege to be on the same stage as you, Tina.